Hello everyone, so what I'd like to do is talk about Hooke's Law and where it comes from and why uh, it leads to the really common simple harmonic equation, simple harmonic motion equation that we see. So I just want to say that Hooke's Law is probably arguably one of the most important laws in physics. It's used everywhere. It's used, uh, you know, all quantum mechanics is based on, you know, uh, approximating everything is little oscillations with Hooke's law. Everything that wiggles in the world can pretty much be described or approximated by Hooke's law. And it's amazing because Hooke's law I don't think holds anywhere over large distances, but Hooke's law is an approximation for almost everything. And so we're going to look at it uh, with the canonical example of a spring, a mass on a spring. So what do we have here? I've drawn some mass on a spring. And what happens is if you if you pull the mass some distance x to the side. Well, what we notice is that some force appears. Some force, F spring, appears to counteract that force that, that pulled it to the side, right? Right, there's some, you have to pull the force there, so there's some external thing pulling, and if you hold it, these things equal out. And let's say we, we let go. So we're going to ignore this force and just think of the force of the spring on this mass as it's moving. And so, so what is the equation? What is the equation? What is the equation for this force? Well, it's F spring is equal to negative K times X. Well, what is K? K is called the spring constant. And it is a macroscopic quantity of this spring. It has to do with how this spring is built, how many coils it has, the material the, the, it's made of, how long it is. Um, so it's really dependent on the spring itself. And essentially what it tells you is how stiff the spring is. So a higher spring constant, the stiffer the spring, the, the lower, the looser the spring it is. Anyway, so this, this is what we have f of x is equal to negative k times x. And you, you know, this works just just because some people get confused with the negative sign. If x becomes negative, right, if f becomes negative, I have a negative sign, right, I, 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 I pl plug in a negative number into here, times this, another negative number, and a negative number times a negative number gives a positive force, right? So you don't have to do anything weird with the negative sign, right? You don't have to overthink it. Just leave it in there, and if the value is negative, plug the negative number in, and it sort of works itself out, right? Okay. Well, we know uh, Newton's second law. So what does Newton's second law say? Well, Newton's second law says that F net is equal to mass times acceleration. Well... Using some calculus, we also remember that the acceleration is equal to the derivative of the velocity or the second derivative of the position. So that means that my equation over here, so I'm just gonna put, I'm gonna put all this in a box over here. My equation over here is equal to m times the second derivative of this, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show that this the simple harmonic motion solves this equation. And for those who haven't seen an equation like this, this is called a differential equation. And so this is an equation that's similar to say finding the roots of a function. So one of the one of the function one of the things we know how to do is we write down some function and we can find the roots for this thing, right? We f and and the roots are a number right? Well, a differential equation is like that, except the thing that we're trying to find is some function x as a function of t that satisfies this equation. Like, is there a function that exists where I take two derivatives of it, I multiply it by m, and I get negative k times the original function I took two derivatives of? Right? Is there a function that exists like that? Okay. And what I would like to show you is that this function is the simple harmonic motion function. So remember we had this for simple harmonic motion. Okay. So this is our function for simple harmonic motion. There's a phi here. I'm just going to assume the phi is zero. The, the derivation stays the same. 
if phi is zero. And what I'm going to show is this is a solution if omega has a very specific form. And what we're going to do is we're going to find that sp specific form for omega. Okay, so how do we show that something is a solution to a differential equation? Well, one of the ways with roots of numbers that we show that a number is a root is we take the number and we plug it back into the equation and the left-hand side of the equation better equal the right-hand side of the equation. That's how we show that something is a root, right? So let's do that here. Let's plug in this solution into both sides of our equation. Well, maybe I'm going to start. So I'm going to start with the left-hand side. So the left-hand side of this is m times two derivatives of x of t times dt. Okay. So uh, if I take the first derivative of it, so dx dt, the first derivative of it, uh, it moves through, I get a sine times omega t, right? So the derivative of cosine is sine, negative sine, right? Gotta make sure we get that negative. Okay, uh, so we do that, derivative of cosine is negative sine, and then we do the chain rule, and the chain rule omega t says that it's omega. Okay. And then the second, another derivative of it, right? So we take a the second derivative, so we take the derivative of this thing, is a, uh, the derivative of sine is cosine, no negative sine, times omega t, and then we do the chain rule again, and we get an omega squared on the outside. Okay, so let's go back down here. On our left-hand side, we have m times two derivatives, so it's negative a times omega squared times cosine of omega t. Okay, well, what's this equal to? Well, this is equal to negative m times omega squared times a cosine omega t, right? Well, what's a cosine omega t equals to? Well, that's equal to m omega squared. Well, right here, a cosine omega t is equal to x of t, right? So this is just equal to x of t. And the left-hand side, so that's, that's, that's the left-hand side, the right-hand side is equal to negative k, right, times x of t. Okay. Well, so when are these equal to each other? Well, if k is equal to m omega squared, which implies that omega squared is equal to k over m, if this is true, then these sides are equal to each other. So what we can do is we can set, we can say, well, the omega, the angular frequency of this oscillation must be equal to these physical properties. And if this is true, then this function, kx is equal to a cosine omega t with omega being this, is a solution to this differential equation, right? And so that's why we use this solution so much, is because when we apply Newton's law, when we apply Newton's law to this, we actually get that this is the natural solution to Hooke's law. Okay, so that's, that's why it appears. So hopefully that makes everything sort of clear-ish.